Today, I'm testing the newest version of VMOS Cloud, and I want to walk you through the full experience from the moment I open it, all the way to choosing the right subscription. Everything you hear is happening in real time, so you'll understand exactly how this platform behaves when you actually use it. VMOS Cloud is basically a full Android device running on a remote server, not on your real phone. My phone, right now, is only acting as a screen and a controller. That's why even a low-end device can run heavy apps here, as long as your internet is stable. And today, I'm testing it like I normally would, to see how smooth the root system works, how the tools behave, and whether it's good for AFK or even for heavy games like Genshin Impact. As soon as I open VMOS Cloud, the virtual device boots up. And this is where the difference hits you. Everything here is handled by their server. Sends are not your phone. If your network is stable, it genuinely feels like using another phone that just happens to live inside your phone. But it's more powerful. Once the virtual device loads, I open the toolbox. This is the control center. The heart. The part where VMOS Cloud becomes more than just a virtual device. Everything feels organized and easy to navigate, so switching between tools never feels confusing. Inside the toolbox, I open Root Management. This is one of the cleanest root toggles I've seen. I turn root off, open root checker, verify, and it clearly says the device is not rooted. When root is disabled, the system behaves exactly like a regular Android phone. Then I go back, turn root on, verify again, and now it shows the device is rooted. And that's what makes this setup so convenient. Switching from a clean mode to full root access only takes a moment. Next, I open process, keep alive. If you're into AFK games, idle farming, or background automation, this feature is basically your best friend. I activate it for the game Ymir, because that game is meant to run continuously. With this turned on, the cloud device won't pause it even if the session goes idle. It just keeps running, exactly the way an AFK setup should. Then I open Hide App Process. Some games freak out when they detect root or certain tools running in the background. This hides those processes, makes everything look clean, like you're using a normal unmodified phone. After that, I go into Auto Start. If the cloud device restarts or crashes during maintenance, this system automatically relaunches whatever app you choose. Perfect for 24-hour farming or anything that needs to stay alive non-stop. Now I open Add Doppelganger. This is where app cloning happens. I duplicate Telegram and instantly a second copy appears. Two accounts, one device, no complications, and it all happens inside the cloud. Now let me show you how VMOS Cloud handles file transfers, because this part is usually where most cloud platforms struggle. Then I tap the floating ball and open the upload feature. Each VMOS Cloud account gets 5 gigs of cloud storage. You can upload APKS, configs, scripts, anything small you need. After checking that, I open Chrome. Speed test was already open earlier, so it loads instantly. I run it, and the server speed is fast. Like, actually fast. Which means, if you want to download a huge game, like Genshin Impact, you don't need to upload files manually. Just download directly inside the cloud device. So, the network speed checks out, and that alone makes a huge difference. Now, let's dive into the advanced tools that really show what this platform is capable of. Then I go back to the toolbox and scroll to the advanced tools. Magisk, LS Post, and Mock GPS. These are for power users. Magisk lets you test system modules. LS Post gives you deep customization. And Mock GPS lets you change your device location without touching your real phone. Everything stays inside the cloud. Your real device stays safe. These features aren't something you'll use every day, but having them built in gives you options. And depending on the apps you run, 
These options can completely change the overall performance. Then I open Modify Resolution. This part matters more than people think. If your goal is AFK Gaming, use 720 by 1280 resolution, DPI 480, 30 FPS. You don't need visuals, you need stability, and this setup gives you that. But for Genshin Impact, go with 1080 by 2340, DPI 480, 60 FPS. This gives smoother animations and better clarity. And for Genshin, always install the app inside VMOS Cloud, not through the browser. Trust me, it performs better that way. Once those resolution changes apply, the system adjusts immediately. No restart needed. It's quick, efficient, and it helps you decide whether you want an AFK-focused build or a performance setup for gaming. Now let's move on and take a look at the subscription plans. After testing everything, I close VMOS Cloud and switch to my browser. I open the referral link, log into my account, and reach the subscription page. Now this part confuses a lot of people, so let me break it down clearly. If your priority is AFK Gaming, choose Android 13, Standard Equipment Model, version V06, and pick the region closest to your actual location. This reduces delay. And if it's your first time, get the 7-day trial plan. It's cheap, and it tells you everything you need to know about performance. That setup works great for automation and long-term AFK tasks, but if you're aiming for heavier games and smoother graphics, then you'll definitely need a stronger configuration. But if you're playing Genshin Impact, choose Android 13 again, but switch to the high-end real machine equipment model. This gives a noticeable boost. Device selection doesn't matter much, but region does. Always choose the one closest to you. And for heavy games, a monthly plan is better because it's more stable long-term. For payments, the website offers multiple payment options depending on your region. But the Play Store version only allows Google Play billing. So if you want more choices, use the web version. Now let me wrap this up. Vemos Cloud is like owning a high-end phone inside your phone. It doesn't heat up your device. It doesn't drain your battery. It can run apps non-stop. It can handle root tools safely. And with the right settings, it can even run games that your real phone struggles with. As long as your connection is stable, the experience is smooth, responsive, and honestly way better than running a traditional virtual machine locally. And that wraps up everything for today. If this video helped you out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and share it with anyone who might need a cloud device setup. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.